Okay, this is just going to be a uh, description of this channel. Not everybody knows what this channel is about. Uh, you know, they they might subscribe or click on a video thinking that uh, they're going to see something like Mind Seed or CJ Fison or uh, Oh My Gosh or you know that's that's not what what I do. Um, I'll give you a little background of the haunting of my home. Uh, two years ago, I didn't believe in ghosts. I was very interested in it. Um, I did watch Steve Huff and uh, a couple of the other serious investigators. Um, I quit watching Steve when he started wearing the gold wire on his head. You know, that was a little bit far out for me. So, um, <laughs> But he did get some excellent evidence, and he uh, did show a lot of ingenuity in building his spirit boxes, uh, modifying spirit boxes to fit his needs, and I thought that was really interesting. Um, the, the next person that I followed a lot was uh, Kent from the Ghost of Carmel, Maine. Uh, Kent went over the edge, I think. He got a little bit too fantastical for me. Uh, and I didn't have a very good feeling about whether or not he was really telling the truth. Now, I do think that his house is haunted, and I, I think he did experience some uh, some of the things he says he did there. Uh, but that shadow guy that started terrorizing him, I, I'm not so sure I buy that. Uh, that's a little off the wall, you know, and it, it happened real quick. He went from uh, EVPs and disembodied voices and noises in his house uh, to this black, solid black thing chasing him around, and I, I, I just I couldn't follow him anymore after that. Uh, and <clears throat> I'll tell you what happened to me, and it's probably what happened to Kent. Kent probably went the other way than I did when this happened. I, I got a message from a couple of guys uh, who were really interested in my YouTube channel, and they said, hey, look, uh, you know, I can probably get you in the next week uh, about 100,000 subscribers, and you can monetize your account. You're just going to have to fake some things. And I blocked both of them and, you know, went my merry way. Um, it's not what I'm about here. I'm not greedy, and I'm not narcissistic, and I, I don't give a damn about uh, being rich and famous. What, what I'm doing here is I'm trying to help people who are going through a haunting and have no resource for it, like I was. Uh, two years ago, like I said, I was interested in haunted houses and hauntings and the paranormal. I didn't know anything about it, uh, and then my house became haunted, and it was pretty quick. Um, I was uh, in my guest bathroom one morning about 8 o'clock, sun was up, but it was pouring down rain. So I went to the guest bathroom to smoke a cigarette, and I heard footsteps coming up the hallway towards the bathroom. And I could feel the impact tremors from the, the footsteps in the bottoms of my feet. So somebody was walking up that hall. I mean, I have wood floors. I know what it sounds like when someone's walking along, uh, walking around in my house. <clears throat> so... I looked up from my phone, expecting my wife to walk around the corner, and she never showed up. So I thought, well, maybe my landlady, you know, was trying to reach me. Maybe she knocked, I didn't answer, so she just came in, which would have been perfectly fine. But it wasn't her either. So I walked out of the bathroom, and I walked around. I'm looking for somebody who's got to be in my house, right? And there's nobody in my house. So I get to the other end of the house, uh, to my bedroom, and my wife is still in bed asleep. She hasn't even gotten out of bed yet. So I really tried hard to blow that off. I really did, but I just couldn't do it. It sat in the back of my mind, and the way my, my brain works is I've got to have an explanation, and I just, I just felt my back of my head touched. My house is super active right now. Um, I don't know if my phone picked that up or not. It was a bang. My house is really super active right now. Um, 
But that stayed in the back of my head. I, I couldn't shake that. I wanted to, but I couldn't. Somebody was in my house, and I needed to figure out what had happened that morning. Um, so I couldn't, of course, figure it out at that point. Uh, so I went about my business. I went to bed. And about 3.45 in the morning, I woke up. And I had no idea why I woke up. I was exhausted. I just wanted to go back to sleep, but I was awake. Um, so I kind of looked around the room. There was nothing going on. My wife was asleep. My dogs were asleep. So I went back to sleep. And the next night, it happened again. I woke up, and I couldn't figure out why. And this time it was about 2.30, maybe 2.15, and here I was awake again, and nothing going on in my room, so I went to sleep. Well, this went on for a few nights, and then uh, one night I was sitting on my love seat in my den, and uh, at this point I only had two dogs. I had Guinevere and Lancelot. They were both on the love seat with me. They jumped up and ran to the window and started barking and growling. And the light was on in the den, so I couldn't see outside. I didn't know what they were barking at. So I calmed them down, and they eventually calmed down and uh, went back to sleep. Well, then the next night, my wife goes to bed. I'm on the love seat. I'm watching videos on my phone. My dogs jump up and go into the kitchen and sit down and look up at an empty spot, wagging their tails like they do with me when I have a treat for them. I was like, what in the hell are you doing? So I got them back over there. They were reluctant to come to me. They wanted to go back to that spot. So they did that a couple of times. And then Lancelot started getting up and staring at one spot. And I've got video of him, a couple of videos of him doing that. Um, just staring at one spot. Absolutely still, just staring. And there's nothing there. And it was really kind of starting to freak me out, but it was funny in a way. So one night he jumps down and he goes and he's staring into this room here, the living room. And I said, well, I'm going to take a picture of him. I'm going to put it on Facebook and show people how ridiculous he's acting. But I wanted to get to li this living room, too, to show that there wasn't anything there. So... The only way for me to get it on my love seat was to put my phone on a timer and take a picture. Keep your ears open for disembodied voices because I just put a video on where I got a bunch of them. So at that, at that time, my love, my love seat was about right here. I put my phone on a timer and I put it out uh, like this. I'm not sure if I'm getting that, like that, and put it on timer, and they got a picture of him sitting there looking into the living room. And so I put it on Facebook. I said, look how utterly ridic ridiculous my dog is acting. There's nothing going on in here, and he's staring again. Well, a friend of mine on Facebook said, uh, have you zoomed into the window? And I said, no, I haven't. She said, well, let me show you something. And she zoomed in, took a picture and showed it to me and blew my mind. There's a demon looking thing with black eyes and horns and it's looking into my window and my dog is sitting there and that's what he was looking at. So that's what started it all. After that night, I was getting bangs, I was hearing footsteps, I was hearing people talking. Um, if I didn't have that picture of him and of that thing in the window, I would have thought that I had developed schizophrenia or some kind of weird dementia. I am an older guy, I'm not too far from 60 years old, um, so it's not out of the question that, you know, something up here may pop. Um, but I did have that picture, and so what I started doing was I started recording as much as I possibly could catch. Photographs, audio recordings, uh, my own uh, uh, testimonial documentary, um, 
you know, video, whatever I could get so that people would know, hey, look, you know, I'm not crazy. This stuff is actually going on. But I still didn't understand how to process it because I didn't know anything about hauntings. So what I did was I jumped on the Internet and I started scouring the Internet. And it took me a very, very long time and going through a lot of garbage to get the information that I was looking for. And, you know, I thought, uh, I, I'm going to give everybody who's going through this like I am something that I didn't have when this started happening. I'm going to give them a resource. I'm going to start documenting this stuff uh, and explaining to them what to look for, explaining to them what's going on that they're talking to me about so that they'll know what's happening, you know, because I didn't know. And there's no place you can go to, uh, you know, take this survey to see if your house is haunted. You know, I couldn't find anything like that. Um, I got, you know, a whole bunch of fantastical par paranormal investigators that were just showing me a bunch of ridiculous stuff that it wasn't, that wasn't going on in my house, but it seemed like every place that they went, every abandoned house that they went into, all this stuff was happening, you know? And it's like wherever they were turned out to be the most haunted place on the planet at that time. And I just, I, I didn't buy that. I wanted to give people a reasonable, factual example of what was going on in my house and what may be going on in their house so that maybe they could cross-reference that and they could say, oh, well, that, you know, I've gone through that too. I've heard footsteps. I've heard people talking in my house. I've heard banging on the walls and stomping on the floors. And that's another thing that started happening. My walls were getting pounded on. I'd be laying on my love seat. Uh, watching a movie on my phone or, or on the internet or whatever and it would sound like somebody ran a car into the side of my house and it would scare the hell out of my dogs it would scare the hell out of me and I, I just I got to the point where you know this is ridiculous I'm going to start recording this stuff documenting as much as I can across as many mediums as I can and I'm going to start trying to help people and so that's what my YouTube channel is about um, it's for people to go and to scan down, watch the videos, and see if some of the stuff that's happening to me is happening to them. Um, I, I'm, I don't care about monetizing my account right now. Um, you know, r right now it's strictly information. So if you came to this channel thinking you're going to see chairs flying around the room and the chandeliers swinging and cabinets, you know, open and closing and doors opening and slamming. You're going to be disappointed because that's not to say that won't happen here, but that kind of stuff hasn't happened yet. What I'm getting... My house is really active right now. Um, what I'm getting is disembodied voices, EVPs, um, people talking, um, and I'm trying to record that as much as possible. Most of my 460 videos on YouTube that relate to the paranormal are EVP sessions that I record. Um, so that, you know, I can show you that, uh, you know, this is the... The story that I'm getting so far, and I'm trying to piece this all together uh, into a timeline and figure out if there is a story to it. Aubrey, if you're here and you want to come up and say something, you're welcome to. Just don't scare me. Keep your ears open during this whole video for disembodied voices. There should be nobody talking in this house. The TV is on, but it's muted. I've got no stereos on, no other phones. I'm here by myself. So if you hear talking and it's not coming out of my mouth, then you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, but so I started recording all this stuff so that uh, I can show people that, you know, this is what's going on in my house. It's real. I'm not faking it. I'm not lying. And I'm trying to put a story together. Now, the, the first... Up until about a month ago, 
Um, I put a story together. I found out that the little boy that I was hearing in my house, his name was Scott. He was shot and killed. Uh, he told me that on a, during an EVP session, and I've got that on my channel. If you go down, it says uh, the little boy uh, EVP only. And that's when he said he was calling for his mama and says they shot him. Um, and my landlady, it just it happened in the house next door to me. My landlady bought that. It's a manufactured home. She painted over his blood on the walls uh, and uh, renovated the house and then moved it over here next to me. Well, the people that were there when I moved in suddenly just split. Um, the, the husband would not spend any time in the house. He spent time in the shop. Uh, and once uh, he, he actually got went to jail for some reason, and when he left, the mother scooped up her kids and bolted. Uh, so we have investigated over there. We've gotten some incredible evidence over there, and now I know why they left so quick. Well, when they left, whatever was over there came over here. Um, so I also discovered there was something evil in my house. Um, it was demonic. Uh, and it called itself Chet. But the other spirits that were in my house thought it was a devil. Um, they, act, they really believed that. Uh, so it had to be something pretty horrifying. Well, then I started having my house investigated by paranormal groups. I have had about 10 investigations. My house has been cleansed four times. Uh, and I've got two or three more groups that are lining up to come in. The next one comes in in March. That's going to be Savage Energy. Uh, they're going to come in. Uh, I don't think we're going to cleanse it at that time. We're just going to investigate and see if we can put more of this puzzle together. So the little boy, is. there is another little boy in here now who I've learned his name is Aubrey. Um, I don't know how he died. I'm trying to figure that out. But... The Chet character is back. He left for about eight months, and now he's back again. Um, so we're, I'm back to hearing stomping him on my floor. Like I said, I'm here alone right now, uh, so there shouldn't be any of that going on. Um, I'm hearing people talking in my bathroom, people, people talking in other rooms that I'm not in. Uh, so I'm starting to record those again just so I can document that. Uh, for historical reference. Um, tonight is really active. I did an EVP session where I had uh, they were stomping. Um, I had Aubrey come forth and if you look down it's uh, I believe the uh, couple of videos the, the, the previous two videos um, Aubrey came forward and he talked as a disembodied voice through the, uh, you know, the session. Uh, and then there's many times where I'm explaining uh, what's going on um, and you can hear him talking behind me. There's, you know, not just him, there's a lot of things being said behind me. And so uh, anyway, that's what this channel is for. It's a resource for people who are being haunted for the first time and they don't know what's going on and they want to know what's going on. Uh, and so what I tell people all the time is, um, you know, my channel is a learning channel. I don't care if you subscribe. I don't care if you smash that like button. But if it helps you, I'm glad it did. I'll talk to you later.